in the great name of Jesus. So glad to have you tune in today. This is Pastor Walter Turner of Faith in Christ Church and we're located at 5735 North Galt Avenue here in Fort Payne, Alabama. And I'm glad that you took time out to tune in with us on WOLW. We appreciate the works of this television station located here locally to bless us and to keep us informed of the local happenings and also a means in which we can hear the Word of God, uh, taught, preached, whatever you want to call it, as long as the Word of God is being ministered. And it's a privilege to me to be able to come into your homes and for you all to take the time out to listen to me as we minister God's Word. Uh, I always covet the prayers of God's people because I know that through this, if we pray one for another, it makes us overcomers. And living in the time that we're living in now, we definitely need to pray one for another. We need the spiritual power of God. We need the grace of God to be able to stand in a time that we're living in, in such a time as we're living in. We are living in the latter times. And if there ever was an hour for God's people to bind together and to be strong and to know that we can depend on one another, it's one thing that we can depend on in this life and that is Jesus. We can depend upon the Lord. He is faithful. He's true. The God we serve is faithful and true. But what the Lord is requiring out of us is the same type of faithfulness to where we give ourselves unto him and we serve him with all of our heart. I would like to extend an invitation to you to come visit our church. If you don't have a home church at this time, our church, the name is Faith in Christ. Because that's what believers are. They have their faith in Christ. The word of God teaches us. He said, <clears throat> you believe in God, believe also in me. So we have our faith anchored in one that will never fail us. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And uh, we have services, prayer. We strive to have prayer five days a week. Beginning at four o'clock, love to pray for at least an hour. Uh, and that's, that's minimal time, I tell you, when we think about it. We might think in our mind that an hour is a long time, and what would I say to God? But when we lose ourselves in the spirit of prayer, we don't even know what to pray for as we ought, but the spirit knows what the need is. And there are many needs today. God's people, we need to bombard heaven. Uh, throughout our city, I see it a lot of churches, even at our church, we have Second Chronicles 7, 14, and it teaches us, he said, if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. Now, that's a message to the church, not to, for the world, but for us to pray, to be intercessors, and to stand in the gap, and to be free from sin ourselves. And it also gives us promises in that scripture, how that the Lord would forgive our sins and heal our lands. And we need the power of God to move in us today and to work in the behalf of the believers. Uh, but we do also have Bible study on Wednesday nights. Wonderful Bible study that we had this past Wednesday night from Psalms 51. And I wish that many of people had been there, things that were brought up and understandings that were given of the word of God. Things that maybe even myself I had not really seen before. But uh, thank God for the nuggets of the word of God. So come be with us. And then on Saturdays, that's our primary day of worship. And we come to worship the Lord and to praise him. I have some beautiful people in my church, people that love the Lord, a beautiful praise team. My grandson, is uh, he's my keyboardist, and I'm about to lose him this summer. He's I'm so proud of uh, Desmond Turner. He's a graduate of Fort Payne High School, and he's been my keyboardist now for several years. But he's uh, recently gotten a scholarship to a university in northern Ohio. And so he'll be leaving me in a couple of months. But I know that God is going to provide me with what I need, another keyboardist. Uh, but I'd love for you to just come because there's something about the anointing. I don't care what it's in, if it's in music, if it's in song, the anointing in the ministering of the word of God, it is a blessing. And God's people, we are to love one another. So I encourage you to come. Our services begin at 12 o'clock on Saturdays. 
So if it's possible, come worship with us. And maybe if it's not, you don't have a home church, you'll find this church to be a place to where you'd like to call home. At any rate, we're praying for the pastors and the ministers' leadership in this area of Fort Payne throughout our county that God would visit our churches and that he would give us revival. We're going to take a moment out now, and I'm going to present to you some of our talent in the church and someone that is going to bless you with song. So enjoy this. Meditate upon the words that are being sung. you 
Thank God for those, that song. Thank God knowing that in this time, it is a time to praise the Lord. It is a time to exalt him in everything that we do because we need him more now than we ever have. As I get a little bit older, I tell you, I find myself conscious of the fact that I need the Lord. I've never been in a time quite like it, seems like it, where so many people are leaving this world, people that we're acquainted with. I had a niece recently who had died, and I do want to remember the Bright family and like to extend this broadcast out to them to keep on keeping on with the Lord and to know that God never makes a mistake. My niece, uh, who is 44 years old, Rochelle Bright, she was a minister. Uh, recently she passed, and we do want to bear that family up and bear up any other family, the great houses, anyone else that has had loved ones to pass on out of this life. Know that we're praying for you, uh, the Thomas Williams family praying for you. Haven't seen you quite often, but I do want you to know that we're praying for you, that God would help you to bear your grief. We're going to the Word of God today. And what I'd like to minister to you today about is love. In this particular chapter, which is the first Corinthians chapter 13, uh, it's called charity. But the meaning is the same. It is love. And I know it's a simple subject, and sometimes people say, well, I've heard that before, and we have a tendency to where we don't tune in. But this is something that we need to examine ourselves with. Examine your love. Uh, things in, in a Christian's life, only you and God know. God knows where your heart is. You know where your heart is. You know the type of love that you have. But when it comes to having God's love, God's love is a love that covers a multitude of fault. And I love the fact that God can make me aware that when I'm not loving as I should, when I'm not concerned as I should, when I'm not compassionate as I should be, that he'll bring me to the word of God and begin to rehearse in me his requirements. Because one thing about it, if we have the spirit of God, we should have the love of God as well. That love that God forgave us when we came to him and repented of our sins. And God tells us to have mercy upon others and to forgive one another. Do we really have it? Are we operating in the love of God? There might be some gifted people. When I say gifted people, I'm speaking of spiritually gifted. Maybe you have the gift of wisdom and knowledge, prophecy. Lord, use you in it. Maybe God uses you in wonders, the laying on of hands, miracles, all of these things. But out of everything that is done, if it's not done in love, it's vain. And only those that are operating in the love of God are the ones that are going to stand before God and hear the voice of the Lord say, well done. No other way. Many going to come to him in that day. He said it. He said, they're going to say, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out devils in your name. And he, he said, and they said, and do many mighty works. But the Lord began to tell them, he said, depart from me, for your works were of iniquity. To think that I've made it that far, and I'm now standing before the one that I, I was laboring for, supposedly laboring for, the one that I've been working in the earth. But now comes a time of reward. And to hear the voice of the master say, depart from me. I never knew you. Your works were of iniquity. This is why we examine ourselves. Are we doing it in love? Uh, there have been ministers that have got caught up monetarily and simply because of the fact that they knew they had people that were in a position that would give and they gave and they lost track. They began to lose track of being sincere in the gospel. It's not what we can gain. It's what we can give, what we can do for God. Love makes you go, no matter what the reward is, when the reward is going to be given. Uh, we're not rewarded here by man, but we're rewarded by God once we finish our course. But let me go on into the word of God. Uh, out, of the first, out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 1, the Bible said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, he, I am become as sounding brass or as a tinkling cymbal. And in this scripture, he was letting it know there are diversities of tongues. You can speak with the tongues of men, and he even said of angels. Sometimes we may call another individual. That's an angel. 
the tone of their voice, the way that they speak to you. You know the love that's in it. You know the sincerity that's in it. A mother may be speaking to her child or maybe a companion speaking to his companion. And they manifest through even their voice, their love for them. It's something about when a person speaks to you in love, they can be correcting you. They can be telling you of the error that's in, their, in, your, way, in your life. But yet they do it out of a love. It's not something that's brutish. It's not something to belittle you. But it is to help you and to edify you and to let you know that we can do better. As people of God and as human beings, we need God's love. Where today would you be? Think for just a moment. Where would you be if it was not for the fact that God's love is such an enduring love? We do things and go contrary to his will. We say things. Our behavior is not always that of a Christian but the Lord still yet loves us and he corrects us and he encourages us mature from these things. Come into the place to where you are perfected in my love. To be in the perfect love of God. To love like Jesus loves. That's what we're all striving for. And the Lord said if we don't do these things. I'm talking about if we don't have love when we do it. We ought to love laboring for God. We ought to love loving. Uh, I, it beats being hated, I can tell you that much. To be loved by God rather than be hated by God. To be loved by brothers and sisters in the Lord. Brotherly love is what the Bible teaches us. That same type of love that will bear one another up. That love will make, make me love you anyhow. I had a pastor that used to say, we have found a true friend when you found somebody that loves you after they know you. And that is nothing but the fact. You have flaws, I have flaws, all of God's children have flaws. Uh, we have things that we want in God to help us in, work on us, Lord. And it should not cause us to love one another less, but it should cause us to pray more one for another. If you see something in my life contrary to God, pray for me. Don't cast me aside, don't consider me a hypocrite, but pray for me because I believe in the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous. A righteous individual is going to pray in love and in sincerity because they want that individual that they're praying for to be helped. But he said, if we don't have the love of God, said all we are is noisemakers. We can make loud noises. We can say a lot of things. But the Bible also teaches us about love. He said, don't love in word only, but in deed and in truth. He said, because how you uh, produce love, how you show love indicates whether you have love or not. If you never can help anybody, if you never can encourage somebody. Sometimes the, the greatest gift I've ever had from different individuals wasn't just that they maybe monetarily blessed me, but when they spoke a word of encouragement in a time that I needed it. When they might see me down, but they come and they begin to bear me up. That's precious to me. I know that that individual loves me because I know that they're fighting in behalf of my soul. How can we give up on one another if God ain't gave up on us? But when we learn to hold fast to the love of God, love is not walking up to somebody every time you see them and telling them you love them. Love is sometimes just a smile, a gesture, maybe even making a request, do you need anything? Telling somebody that you're praying for them. There is so much work to be done in this earth to visit into the nursing homes, into the hospitals, and you don't have to be a minister or a pastor to do these things. But because love motivates you, that's what causes you to want to comfort others. Verse 2 said, And though I have the gift of prophecy, and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, said I am nothing. To have all of this great ability to do these things in the spirit realm. I mean, you prophesy by the spirit, and it is a gift. When Jesus died and ascended into heaven, the Bible said that he gave gifts unto men. And the gift of prophecy is one of those gifts. And here he's saying you can have that gift. And in, 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 in the passage below that, 
It said you can understand all mysteries. There are things in this Bible that I don't fully understand. I don't understand all of it. But I know as we keep living, we'll see things come to pass and we'll understand what God meant when he wrote this word. But you can have that ability to understand the mysteries of God. But if you don't have love, it's not going to profit you one bit. It said in all knowledge and though I have all faith, Love to be around people with faith. <clears throat> I'm talking about the genuine faith where their testimony is, is that they overcame. <clears throat> they went through things, but they trusted in the Lord. And their faith caused them to wait on God, and it brought them out. But if you don't have love, faith that operates by love, then again, you're nothing. Faith that can remove mountains. Pluck up sycamore trees. But if you ain't got love in you, <clears throat> you're still nothing. Men can esteem you as being something so great simply because you have these gifts. But they don't know the content of your heart. <clears throat> I have been around ministers, not all, but some, that seemingly the gifts and the accolades of men and the acknowledgement that God was in an individual's life, that they lost sight that they were human beings, and that they still yet weren't above anybody. <clears throat> no matter how you use by God, you remember that this earth is where you are, and this house that you're dwelling in, this earthen vessel, is going back to the dust of the earth. And anything that you've done, if you haven't done it in the love of God, it's not going to profit you in the day of judgment. He said, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, that's such a great gesture. Hollywood had came up with the idea that they were going to eliminate poverty throughout the world. Sounds so great. But what is the purpose? Uh, the Bible teaches me that you'll have the poor with you always. No matter what you do, no matter how much giving you give, if it's not done in love, it's not beneficial. <clears throat> He said, and though I give my body to be burned, what are you sacrificing your life for? If you can't do it because you love God, if you're doing it just to, I can't understand that myself, just to say I, I died giving myself to, to the Lord. But if you didn't love, if you had things in your heart when you died in these conditions, if you didn't have the love of God in your heart when you died, it's not going to profit you anything. It's not going to profit you one thing if you don't have God's love in your heart. The only thing that benefits any of us is that we've been forgiven by the love of God. The only thing that makes us overcomers in this world is that we hold fast to the love and that we love one another. <coughs> Excuse me. When the Lord began to give Moses the law, the first thing that he talked about was love. And he began to say that to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second commandment, being likened unto the first, it says to love our neighbor as ourselves. Love is the thing that God manifests unto all. His love does not hold respect to persons, but his love is so real that anyone that will come to him, he'll welcome you in. No matter how bad your condition is, no matter how evil you have been, how wicked you have been, you may have done some things that are despicable. People would not even want to associate with you at all. But to think that you can come to the Lord and he'll love you. There are so many people that are seeking for love. But you can look for love in the wrong places. But when you begin to seek for God, and when you find him, because it said if you seek for him, you're going to find him. And as you seek for God, you're going to find he loves me. God loves me more, I recognize now, than I ever have. God loves me despite me. Now that's love. Sometimes have you ever done something that you thought within yourself, why would I do that? How did I do that? But you realize you can go before God and, God and know he's still there. He loves me. And all you got to do is ask him to help you, strengthen you in the love of God. 
His love is so great that he even gave us a command. He said, love your enemy. That doesn't even sound possible to many of us. I can't love my enemy. Some struggle loving their brothers and their sisters. So you know good and well you have a struggle in loving your enemy. But the word gives us command. And here it began to tell us it profits us nothing if we don't do things in the love of God. To be a martyr for God, that's a great thing. But I tell you this much, if you don't die in the love, your reward is still yet not going to be from God. Verse 4 says, these are descriptions of the love of God, the charity. The first thing it's said about charity is that ch charity suffereth long. We have very limited amount of patience as human beings. We want things instantly. We don't like suffering. I, I can say that again. We, don't, we have not learned to rejoice in afflictions. We have not learned to rejoice in our sufferings. If you're not suffering for your own faults and you are truly suffering for the Lord's sake, don't you know that's something to rejoice in, that God loved us so much that he allowed us to follow the path that he follows? Jesus himself suffered. The Bible said he suffered without the gate. They took him, they punished him for you and I's sake. And, and all of these things he did out of love because he knew I am the supreme sacrifice that has been sent into the world for the sins of man. He said, man may not even realize what a benefit that I am, but when I die and I rise, and then I begin to draw people by my spirit unto God, then they will recognize how much I love them. If you've been born again, you ought to love God. And this is what he tells us, suffer long. Suffer long. You suffer long. Sometimes you've got to wait on God and you might be in affliction. You might be going through the fiery furnace of affliction, but you learn to love the Lord. Don't get upset with him. Don't get angry because it's all working to your good and to your favor. <clears throat> when I began to think of my niece, and I'll add this, she was a woman, she's 44 years old when she passed. And I, I can testify of these things concerning her life. I noticed how that she would honor her mother and honor her father. She went as far as she could, doing the things she could do before her mother passed. She was there for her. I've seen her do the same things when it came to her father. And through their suffering, she manifested love. And she was there to support him and to be with him. And I... I, I Read in the word of God where the Bible tells me that if we honor father and mother that our days would be long upon the land in which the Lord thy God giveth thee. But when I heard of her death, I'll be honest with you, it kind of shook me. I'm thinking she's 44 years old and Lord, from what I know and from what I've seen, she's honored her parents and your word tells me you give us long life. But I can't question God concerning any of it because of the simple fact that he's in control. All I know is that I love him. Whatever he does is right. He never has made a mistake, and nor will he ever make a mistake. Love says that God knows all things. And we learn to rejoice in the fact that we are serving the true and the living God. It said it is kind. Uh, to be kind one to another is to respect one another. If you're not kind to an individual, you don't respect that individual. But yet we can require and we can say that we want to be respected. But God does not operate like that. God wants us to understand that if we be kind one to another, be concerned about somebody else's feelings. Sometimes a person may be having a bad day and all they need is somebody to say, what's the problem? And, and you can begin to talk to you and tell you what's in the heart or what's troubling them. That's being kind and understanding one towards another. It tells us here, charity, envy if not. Whatever God blesses you with, that is your blessing. To envy you for anything that you have. I, I, can, I tell my church all the time, we can have as much of God as we want. We don't have to envy anybody for anything that they've got. Whatever things that God provides or supplies unto them, whatever things that they're paying for or have paid for, work for to obtain, thank God that they have what they have. But always bear in mind that, Lord, what you've given me, let me be thankful. 
Let me love you for furnishing my needs. Uh, maybe your clothing is not name brand, but if God is covering your body, maybe the food that you eat isn't, isn't prime rib or, or this type of thing all the time. But whatever you got, be thankful. And to give God praise, give him love because he is a provider for the righteous. He will meet every need. And he does not want us to envy anybody. I don't care what they have. The things of this life, sometimes the more you have, the more you want, and the more detrimental things can be unto you. But when we are poor in spirit and we're desiring more of God, that's the thing that we need to be. Lord, I want more of you. I want more of your love. Fill my heart. Make me to the point to where I, I love giving more so than receiving. It's a charity, Vaughn, if not itself. Whatever God raises you up to do, whatever position you have in life, we have to have people in authority. In the political realm, we have to have a president. And if I were to say anything concerning the electoral race that's taking place now, all I can say is I'm going to love God. I'm going to pray and ask his direction. And whoever gets in office, I have to love them. The word of God teaches me to pray for those that are in authority. You pray for them. You might think, well, what can my prayers do? Or, or do you believe that you're serving the true and living God? Do you believe that in fear I have to obey you and walk upright? And if you tell me to pray for the president, I'll do it. It doesn't matter who he is or who she is. Pray because that's the answer. That's a sign that you love is because you're putting matters into the hand of God. It said it is not puffed up. Arrogance. It's something about being around an arrogant individual that makes you want to leave their presence. But you find a humble person. You find somebody that realizes, man, I'm down here just like you are. And I have my struggles. I have my battles. I'm not exempt from sickness. I'm not exempt from anything. Job, the book of Job, if it doesn't set an example for every believer, because Job was a wealthy man that morning. But when the day was over, he was a poor man. But Job never lost his integrity, his love for God. He loved God. We never know how God is going to test us that we might know, and he knows how much love that we have. And whatever you go through, don't you ever give up on the love of God because God loves you. It said, it doth not behave itself unseemly. Have you ever been around a person that always had to be the center of attention, always had to have the platform, always wanted to be the one that was noticed? And if somebody disagreed with them, they had to almost embarrass another individual. These are not the behaviors of Christ. It's a shame to say that in the house of God, because why was Paul teaching us the behavior of charity? Because he saw all these things that were contrary to the true love of God operating in the house of God. It's a good thing when we can sit down and be taught. Let it be rehearsed over to us again and again until we get it. God brings ministers into the, our lives and sometimes they begin to preach maybe a message that you've heard and it's because God is saying, I want this to get real unto you. I want it to be so real that when, I, when you hear it again, you can confess that, Lord, I'm doing just what you said to do. Lord, you brought some changes in me to where my behavior, I know when I'm not acting like I should. You know when you're not acting as you should. Uh, we can blame it on anything that we want to, but I tell you, it's the same. There is no excuse that's going to get us by when it comes to God. God tells us the behavior, tells us what it needs to do. We shouldn't behave ourselves unseemly. It said, "It seeketh not her own." It's always a concern about somebody else rather than it is about your wants, your needs. It's always somebody else that God will bring to mind and let you realize that you're blessed to where you can help somebody. You might say, I don't have a lot of money. It doesn't take a lot of money to show forth love. If you were blessed with money, it would be a good thing to where you could give where it's needed. But when you don't, still love. Love despite of. God will reward you. God will bless you. He'll bring a season into your life to where you can show forth love in whatever aspect you want to do it. It said, it doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not its own, and is not easily provoked. 
uh, they speak of, of the seasons and they say that human behavior is like this. In the summertime, there are more murders than there are at any other season of the year. Said because the temperatures rise, body temperatures rise, and people are easily to be provoked. Road rage is something that is real. It's amazing. Folks can travel and once they get upset and they're in, an, in a vehicle and a vehicle can be a deadly thing. I saw uh, this week on television about a motorcycle group. And they were not a troubling group. They were just out enjoying their motorcycles. And a man and his wife were there on their bike, and they got into an altercation with a man that was in a car. And when they had stopped side by side, the man turned his vehicle and ran over the motorcycle. By the grace of God, nobody died. The gentleman that was operating the motorcycle came out with a broken leg, and his wife ended up with a lot of bruises and things. And you wonder, Lord, we live in such a world where evil prevails. Where be the love of God? Someone gets upset with you. Someone gets mad at you. You know, the best thing you can do is keep your own composure by the grace of God. I'm not saying that it's always easy, but I do know that God's love is real. God will teach us his ways. The reason I admire the Lord so much I've not seen a man in this earth that behaved as I read about him. When they took him into judgment, I don't find where the Lord railed against Pilate. He didn't rail against those that plucked his beard, spit up on him, smacked him. He was suffering for God. He was suffering in the will of the Lord. I believe there's such a difference in when we suffer for God and in the will of God. And we don't have to provoke someone or get involved into altercations. <clears throat> I believe as a child of God, the best thing we could do is try to avoid any altercation. It's not about you proving that you're a man or you're a woman. But it's about you proving that God is on the inside. And that the Lord knows how to take care of his own. Here it tells us that we need to think upon the word. And to behave ourselves in a manner that is pleasing unto God. Not easy to be provoked. Said it thinketh no evil. I'll be honest with you. When I read this scripture. And it's been read over and over again. And I, I get in my thoughts. And I go to thinking. Lord I shouldn't think evil. You have to help me on this. But I find where a person that is continually thinking evil. There is something wrong with your heart. Evil thoughts proceed from the heart. And when we are constantly thinking of evil things, where is our victory? Because if you love God and you begin to meditate upon God and you realize, Lord, I fear you so much and I want a pure mind. I want clean thoughts. I want a mind. The Bible even encourages us, said, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. And many things go on in life that will get your attention. And I believe if we think something don't let it take root. Just let it pass. Begin to call on the Lord if you have to. You say, Brother Turner, what do you mean? Call on the name of Jesus. I guarantee you evil thought will get out of your mind. You begin to ask him. Just ask him in that moment. You don't even have to uh, say it out loud. All you do is just begin to meditate. God, get my mind on you. Get my heart right. Let my spirit be right before you because you are the judge and you know all things that go on in my life. But when we entertain evil thoughts, after a while it gets to the place to where a seed is sown and we find ourselves acting upon these evil thoughts. But when we allow the love of God to operate in us, we'll love God. And you don't mind telling God. I, I try not to let a day go past that I don't tell the Lord, Lord, I love you. I want him to know it. I want to express to him because I didn't even know what love was all about until he showed me his love. I never had the proper understanding about love. I'm thinking love is a one-sided thing. But you know what? When you love God, when you love the Lord, and I'm talking about you give him your heart, he'll put something in you that will cause you to love others. And you will have the love of God operating through you. He said, it beareth all things. We can't bear a lie sometimes. We hate the thoughts. Well, Lord, I need to defend myself. But sometimes you're going to have to bear reproach. You're going to have to bear a lie. 
things are going to be spoken about you. And you still got to love anyhow. You got to realize, the Lord, those are just words. And Lord, you know the truth. I'm not a deceiver. I'm not a hypocrite. You know the truth about my life. You know me in secret. You know me in light. Wherever I am, God, you're there. And I rec and to recognize you bear some things. As a child of the king, you're going to bear some things. It said it believeth all things. What does it believe? It believes the truth. It does not believe a lie. I, I hate someone that is a gossip bearer or tale bearer. People that will bear something and think it's so important that everybody else knows. And then when they find out that there was no truth to it. What have you done? You've lied. And the Bible here tells us how that we don't do these type of things. Said it believeth all things. It believes the truth. It doesn't, it tests things. If, if you know of a person that constantly always have some information to give, some, some story to tell, question that person. Begin to examine what they say. It said it hopeth all things. What does it hope? It hopes for the best. It hopes for the best even in a bad situation. It hopes that God will intervene and bring change. If a person or a loved one you have is dying, you hope in faith that God will raise them up and give them life. If you see a couple that maybe they're getting ready to go to a, through a divorce, you pray in hope, believing and asking God, God bring change into that marriage. If you see a troubled child and you see someone that maybe their child is bound on drugs, maybe they stay in trouble all of the time, you shouldn't lose that hope and that love that God, this soul, can be corrected and brought into the knowledge of the truth. Our love is so diverse from any other love simply because of the fact as the Lord reached out to us when we were in trouble, we should reach out to others while they're in trouble as well. It hopeth all things and it endureth all things. <clears throat> you're going to have to endure some things. Uh, some things you're going to, you one thing for sure, we're going to have to endure the chastenings of God. He chastens everyone that he loves. And for whatever period of time it is that he feels necessary in chastening us and striving to get us into a place to where we are uh, perfected in his word, perfected in his will, then we should allow the Lord to do what he will in our lives. We're not our own. We are bought by price. And I am so glad that he was willing to shed his blood for the remission of my and your sins. I'm so glad that he became that sacrifice from the foundation of the earth that God had ordained to come into this world and to be rejected of men, but then on the other hand to be received by those that would dare to believe. Simple faith in him and faith in the word that says, Lord, you're real. I've never seen him. You've never seen him. Maybe some have, but I, to say that I have seen the Lord, I never have seen him, but I love him. Because I believe he's real. I know he's real. He touched me with his love. I feel the effects of the love that God has shown in my life. It says charity never faileth. Never faileth. Ain't that a beautiful, knowledgeable thing? God, your love never fails. No matter what crisis might take place in this world, no matter what troubles might go on in this life, your love never fails, Lord. And if your love don't fail, and if it's in me, that means that I don't fail either. It said, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. I have seen people be ministered to and words being spoken to them. And in that moment, that was a word, I believe, from God. But I've also seen how people did not take the word and apply the word, and work with what God told them, and it didn't come to pass. There are things that we have to do when God begins to speak to us. To see God's word performed in our lives, there has to be change. I notice how sometimes we as humans, we, begin, we may be ministered to, some of you may not even believe in prophecies. You may not even believe in the gifts of God, but I do. I firmly believe in it. I believe in the Holy Ghost because I have it. And I know that there are gifts in the Holy Ghost. And I, I know that when God begins to do a thing, and you may be ministered to, that doesn't mean that you're perfect. That doesn't mean that you're where you need to be. That's an encouragement from God for you to move into another glory. 
That's an encouragement from God of what he wants to do in your life. And love makes you realize, Lord, I'm not there yet, but help me. Bring this to pass in my life. I don't want your words of prophecies to fail. And it tells us here plainly, prophecies are going to fail. Some things that are spoken, they're not going to come to pass. But if you be a believer, hold to what God tells you. It says, whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Every tongue shall come to the place to where it's quiet. Tongues will cease. Men can speak some of the boldest things of what they're going to do. Because in that particular time, they feel they have the ability to bring to pass what they spoke. But we find that there comes a time when tongues are silenced. And something's not said. Things are not said. It said, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. I want that that does not fail. Knowledge is a good thing. Education is a good thing. But it should never take preeminence over the love of God. You can have degrees. You can have the knowledge of the world. You could be called a doctor. All of these things are not going to get you into heaven. If you ain't got the love of God and you don't love the Lord with your heart and you're serving him with everything that is within your being, you won't even see him in peace. You can have degrees and all of these things and the acknowledgement of man as to how much knowledge you have, things that only, only you know but it still won't benefit you. The simplicity is, is to love. Having that that will not fail. It said they shall cease. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. He said, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Anything that is done, even in the spirit realm, is done in part. We don't see the full effect of it. Right now, it's the spirit that does what it needs to do. If it speaks something in, in very few words, but it's in part that the Lord is telling us what needs to be done. He said, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. When the Lord shall come back again, when we are made into the exact image, the exact likeness, when we become the full ordained sons of God, we will no longer be doing things in part. But we'll understand all things in the fullness. Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. We got too many grown people in body and not mature in spirit. He was letting it be known when I was a child now. He said, I even spake as a child. My vocabulary was limited. My thinking was limited. He said, I even understood as a child. I couldn't comprehend things that adults could comprehend. But as my mind began to grow, as I began to grow, then the capacity of my ability to learn began to increase as well. And he said, as, and I thought as a child. He said, but when I became a man, and the good part about it, Paul wasn't just speaking about being a Hebrew man. He was talking about being a man of God, a believer. He said, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. He put away the desire to fight against God. He put away the desire to hate God because when he hated God's people, he hated God. God had to teach him what was the truth. He had to instill in him. He took a murderer when he took Paul and he began to put in him the love of God. He gave him a heart transplant, a change of heart. He changed that man's heart. His nature began to change and he became like Jesus. It said, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face to look upon the Lord, to behold the glory of Jesus. One day to see him, every true child of God. What a great and notable day that will be when we look upon the face of Jesus. To look in his eyes. To see that love that he has for us. And to be able to just give him thanks in his holy presence. What a day that will be. Said now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. I shall know more about myself even in that day. I'll know 
that I'm truly a son. Sometimes we as God's people, we struggle in the fact that we are sons of God because there's still yet some failure in us. We haven't reached that level of maturity that we need to. But when God finishes with us, we're not finished products, but when God gets through with us and we shall be like him, that's such a blessing. And said, and now abide in faith. We have faith here. And I've thought oft times, we have faith on the earth because we need faith. Hope is here. And it talks about charity. It said these three. Said, but, uh, but the greatest of these is charity. Let us possess the love of God. Let us cherish what God has put in us. Because if you have his spirit, you have enough love that will help you to overcome all things. Thank you for tuning in today. Do give W-O-L-W a call or send a message, text them, let them know how much you appreciate the things that are going on with this television station. May God bless each and every one of you in the great name of Jesus.